By the way, the media cannot get over that statement by the president, which he used the S word. I mean, the same media, the same media that didn't have a single pang of conscience or morality to investigate rape allegations against Bill Clinton can't stop with the S word and, uh, and George Bush. Pathetic. Uh, anyway, speaking of the Palestinians, very interesting piece in Jewish World Review the other day by an Arab named Yosef Ibrahim. He writes an open letter to the Palestinians. And I want to read this to you. It's very interesting. He writes, The war with Israel is over. This is to the Palestinians. You have lost. Surrender and negotiate to secure a future for your children. We, your Arab brothers, may say until we are blue in the face that we'll stand by you, but the wise among you and most of us know that we are moving on, away from the tired old idea of the Palestinian Arab cause and the eternal struggle with Israel. Dear friends, you and your leaders have wasted three generations trying to fight for Palestine, but the truth is, the Palestine you could have had in 1948 is much bigger than the one you could have had in 1967, which in turn is much bigger than what you may have to settle for now in another 10 years. Struggle means less land and more misery and utter loneliness. At the moment, brothers, you would be lucky to secure a semblance of a state in that Gaza Strip into which you have all crowded, and a small part of the West Bank of Jordan. It isn't going to get better. Time is running out, even for this much land. So here are some facts, figures, and sound advice, friends. You hold keys, which you drag out for television interviews, to houses that do not exist or inhabited by Israelis who have no intention of leaving Jaffa, Haifa, Tel Aviv, or West Jerusalem. You shoot old guns at modern Israeli tanks and American-made fighter jets, doing virtually no harm to Israel while bringing the wrath of its mighty army down upon you. Again, an Arab writing to the Palestinians. You fire ridiculously inept Qassam rockets that cause little destruction and delude yourselves into thinking this is a war of liberation. Your government, your social institutions, your schools, and your economy are all in ruins. Your young people are growing up illiterate, ill, and bent on rights of death and suicide, while you, in effect, are living on the kindness of foreigners, including America and the U.N., Every day, your officials must beg for your daily bread, dependent on relief trucks that carry food and medicine into the Gaza Strip and the West Bank, while your criminal Muslim fundamentalist Hamas government continues to fan the flames of a war it can neither fight nor hope to win. In other words, brothers, you are down, out, and alone in a burned-out landscape that is shrinking by the day. What kind of struggle is this? Is it worth waging at all? More important, what kind of miserable future does it portend for your children? The fourth or fifth generation of the Arab world's have-nots. We, your Arab brothers, have moved on. Those of us who have oil money are busy accumulating wealth and building housing, luxury developments, state-of-the-art universities and schools and new highways and byways. Those of us who share borders with Israel, such as Egypt and Jordan, have signed a peace treaty with it and are not going to war for any time soon. Those of us who are far away in places like North Africa and Iraq, frankly, could care less about what happens to you. Only Syria continues to feed your fantasies that someday it will join in liberating Palestine, even though a huge chunk of its territory, the entire Golan Heights, was taken by Israel in 1967 and annexed. The Syrians, my friends, will gladly fight down to the very last Palestinian. Before you got stuck with this Hamas crowd, another cheating, conniving leader of yours, Yasser Arafat, sold you a rotten bill of goods, more pain, greater corruption, and millions stolen by his relatives, while your children played in the sewers of Gaza. The war is over. Why not let a new future begin? I told you it was good. By Yusuf Ibrahim, Jewish World Review, July 12, 2006. Very good. Let's go to... Uh, John in Brooklyn, uh, you're on the air, sir. Hello? Yes, when I go to you and I, I say John in Brooklyn, you are John in Brooklyn, are you not? How you doing, Mark? Uh, All what you right. Saying, but I really got to ask you something. What has Israel done for the United States of America? 
What do you want Israel to do for the United States? Well, what has it done that we have to, I guess... I don't know, sir. Know. What has Taiwan done for the United States of America? Can you answer that? Well, we're fighting for Israel. What has, has, has... Lower them down. What has South Korea done for the United States of America? These are all fronts against totalitarianism, sir. Are you aware of that? Iraq. All right, you're a dumbass. Get off the phone. What do all these countries do for us? And what we do with them. They're called allies. They're called allies. If Israel didn't exist, I explained this last week. If Israel didn't exist, what would be going on in the Middle East? Think about it. Same thing that went on in Iraq. They'd be slaughtering each other. Israel isn't a burden. Israel is a, is, is a, uh, the Arabs have a, the, many of them have a desire to destroy the Jews. That's all it is. Thousands of years of contempt and hate and jealousy. That's what it is. But what does any ally do for us, quote unquote? Any ally, I don't know. Taiwan, as I said, South Korea. They help us when we need help. And we help them when they need help. It's what friends do. Big dummy.